Now we continue with a focus of looking at the criminals, a criminal activity in the construction industry, which is affecting the country's growth and development. What will the impact be if we fail to tackle the so-called construction mafia? Now throughout the show, we're considering the implications with my colleague Gareth Edwards out on location in Honeydew. Uh, and because of the sensitivity of this discussion, we can't disclose his specific location. Gareth, again, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, you know, even the updates, getting it from a Minister of Infrastructure, Sihle uh, Zigalala, saying it is a problem that they've been working on eradicating. Mm. But nonetheless, the processes should be followed. There are economic opportunities, but you can't just try and eliminate your competition using violence and brutality. Yeah, and this is exactly what's happening on the ground. Sunday morning, everyone, welcome back once again uh, to our focus on uh, what is a construction mafia. Essentially, 30% of the value of a contract is being extorted out of some construction firms. We're not just talking small size and uh, medium size construction firms either. We're talking massive projects, both in the public and the private sector as well. Uh, these extortionists simply arrive on site. They prevent any work from being done. They go over to the construction firm office demanding this 30 percent of the value of a contract not for doing any work they just want the money and then beyond that as well they also start demanding protection money it has had a serious impact on construction around the country for houses factories any kind of infrastructure primarily back in 2019 it's one of the big uh, years for the construction mafia in our country we're talking hundreds of billions of rands that it has affected just as a side by the way I forgot to ask the minister about this the Durban High Court, by the way, is currently undergoing renovations and they've had to stop work, that construction company there, because of a construction mafia element in the area. Just to give you a real sense of justice denied uh, and justice delayed, rather, is justice denied. But let's try and get a sense of how the industry is handling this and their view on that. I'm joined by Mr. Webster and Febe, uh, who is the CEO of the South African Forum of Civil Engineering Contractors, making his way uh, to our location. Webster, morning to you. I appreciate your time. So uh, I'm sure you've been aware of how bad the situation has been. You've been CEO for 10 years. Just give me a sense, a, a dipstick level, if you will. How bad is it at the moment? Uh, it is uh, still a problem, uh, but it was uh, very bad in 2019 to an extent that uh, we lost uh, skills to other countries, engineering and technical skills, 110 of them mm. to other countries. And I think I need to put this into perspective because uh, the UNESCO report of 2010 acknowledges that engineering drives social, economic and human development and underpins our knowledge, societies and infrastructures. It is a major factor in innovation and indeed the rise and fall of civilizations. Mm. If we as a country have to develop and be civilized, we cannot afford to lose engineering skills, which are critical uh, also in the competitiveness of our own economy. Uh, over a period of five years up to the beginning of uh, uh, 2022, 404 sites were uh, disrupted at the value of 51.2 billion rands and we have engaged with some of the uh, business forums that are involved here because we cannot leave this to the hands of the police only mm. and indeed that intervention saw a drop in the incidence of these but they are still ongoing we need a, a united effort between all social partners government, business, communities, and the police need to pay their role in order to bring this phenomenon down. One of the reports I was uh, looking at in, the, in preparation for today as well, Webster, was that many of these construction firms, and it's these multi-billion rand construction firms, huge organizations, they've gotten into the habit of simply paying these extortionists just to allow the project to get done. The issue with that, though, tell me if you agree, is we're now starting to legitimize this kind of criminality. We're not fighting it with the law. We're not fighting it with the SAPS. We're paying it just so we can get the job done. This can't be helping someone like you. Yes, indeed. That is uh, completely wrong. Uh, uh, on the part of the industry, we need a mindset reset uh, to look at things differently. 
simple compliance with illegality will not uh, stop this. In fact, it is a fertilizer. Mm. It fuels mm. the phenomenon and it encourages more uh, people to get away with murder, so to speak, because at stake is the economy of this country, at stake is the infrastructure that is intended to benefit the citizens of this country. Uh, those companies, I have warned them on behalf of our organization not to get involved in paying bribes uh, because uh, they are uh, just perpetuating mm. this phenomenon which needs to be stopped on its tracks. One of the bigger issues as well, especially down in KZN, apart from the looting that we saw in the province and many uh, buildings and many projects having to be restarted and revamped, so you saw an influx of construction in KZN, but also a major construction company announcing they were going to stop doing work in KwaZulu-Natal as a result of this, uh, uh, this extortion as well. And then to your point, and I want you just to add some more flesh to the bone for me on that. Uh, we're losing engineers. Could we start seeing international construction companies and their expertise pulling out if us as a country don't get on top of that? I imagine that's a huge risk. Well, it's a huge risk. Look at it conversely. Actually, as we lose those skills, our breakfast will be eaten under our noses by international companies coming to close that space, that gap that is left by our own people mm. who cannot uh, 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 operate because of this phenomenon. And indeed, uh, some of the construction uh, international firms would be deterred from investing and coming to operate here in South Africa. But the huger the risk, the, the greater the reward. Uh, some of them are already coming in and operating in South Africa as we speak when our uh, own uh, construction companies, for example, according to Stats SA, 94 uh, construction uh, uh, companies close their doors. Uh, year on year, uh, compulsory uh, uh, liquidations increased by 56%. Uh, 32% uh, liquidations in the construction sector, they rose by 32%, 32% whereas in other economic sectors, on average, uh, liquidations uh, uh, went down by uh, 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 only 1%. Mm. Uh, uh, it is a, a very huge uh, problem that needs to be tackled, tackled uh, convincingly uh, with uh, all available resources put to it. And this is the, the sense, Webster, that I'm getting then, is this is a very, very international issue for us as well. It's going to start having a knock-on effect there. Webster, I think you've given us uh, some wonderful insight as to just how bad uh, the situation is. Uh, Cindy Webster Mfebe is the CEO of the South African Forum of Civil Engineering Contractors on the ground, talking to companies, talking to construction firms with a real sense of the kind of damage that's being created here. If we start seeing outside uh, companies no longer wanting to come into the country, if you start seeing local construction firms closing their doors, you are creating a vacuum. As he says, it is the fertilizer for criminality in this sector, and that's what needs to be stamped out uh, very quickly. My thanks to Webster and Febe for making time for us this morning. Thanks so much, Gareth. We'll also be speaking to Chris uh, Campbell, CEO of the Consulting Indian Engineer South Africa, now trying to understand how the procurement process works and what would give these criminals the um, even idea or notion that they are entitled to 30% of the fund. We heard from Minister Zigalala that the procurement, the legislation was there in place to give the local small businesses opportunity to participate uh, in the bigger project. So that uh, will be our next focus, looking at what the legislation intends to do and how it may have been exploited. So thank you indeed. We'll come back to Gareth in a bit and thank you at home for staying with us on our focus on the construction mafia.